On uh, Monday at uh, the View on 5th, we'll have a coat drive where we're partnering with the, the Dream Center and the uh, home team uh, to, to collect some coats, and then it'll be like a meet and greet. And I think it'll just be a great time just to be able to, take, to give coats to, to kids and also to the homeless people in the area. So. Chris, how much do you devote each week to things like that? How, how much is it you directly involved setting up those things? Mm -hmm. And what do you enjoy about this, that part of the process? Yeah, so our, our board has meetings a lot. And so obviously, you know, I'm here at the Woody, so I can't always be involved in those board meetings. But I, I, t I talk to my mom almost every day about it. And um, I usually spend my off day Mondays. And that, that that's where we... Um, set the like game plan up for the you know the things are that you know like to do next uh, a football question uh, when the way Mayan Williams runs the ball does this offense get a spark from that does it get something from just out of his running stuff yeah I mean anytime you know you're like blocking somebody downfield and you know you see someone just blow past your face and you see those little legs just going you know you're gonna be hyped you know what I mean? So I think, um, you know, because you, you get a chance to, you know, celebrate for like 40 yards and just look around. I mean, that's a fun time, you know, and then go to field goal. So I feel like, yeah, when, when, when there's runs like that, then you definitely enjoy it. You know, it definitely you know, sparks things up. Um, yeah, I actually did see that on Twitter. I was I was scrolling through, looking for some memes, and I saw that pop up because I think my mom retweeted or something like that. But um, yeah, like I thought that was cool. But um, yeah, that was cool. Let's see. Um, I've definitely enjoyed the transition, and um, I thank C Coach Fry, and Coach Salini for helping me. You know make it smoothly but again like you know like you said it's only been five games in and I know I still got a lot of things I got to improve on but I feel like that's also the exciting part is that you know I'm start I'm starting to see that success but yet again there's things I still have to upgrade and continue to improve on physically but also on the you know mental side you know um I mean, I'd like to kind of keep that to myself for right now because I feel like that's just something that I sort of internally, you know, I talk, I only share that with my family and the you know, coaching staff as far as the things I want to do. But I want to put on a field for you guys and for this team is hopefully you guys will be able to see the upgrading every week. Paris, new or, you, new or used coach for um, your coat drive? New or gently used. Gently used? Yeah, yeah. new or gently yeah. used. And you're looking for primarily kids? Kids size type stuff? Kids, but again, like any size is, is cool. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I wear like 3X, so I'm sure yeah. like, you know, maybe if there's even like, you know, four or five people out there in the local area that they need a 3X, then I'll, you know, I'll be sure to take care of them too. So yeah. it, it's really any size. It's not just for kids, but also just for, for homeless people in the area as well. Going back to Mayan, in your brain, what drives him? What have you seen? What, what motivates him? from what you can tell? Uh, well, I just know he just has love for his family. And I know his grandma, she passed away recently. And I know she was very special to him. And, and also she was special to all, all of us on the team that, you know, we were blessed with the opportunity just, just to be around her. Uh -huh. She was a wonderful woman and she was always excited, you know, to, yeah. to see us and to, to, to be around us and be around my end. And I think that just, you know, motivates him. And I feel like it's just love for the people in this team and the people in the locker room and um, and him just trusting us to, to, to hit that hole, you know what I mean? Yep. Trusting, you know, we're going to do, do our jobs. I think that's just what's there for him. Hey, one thing, do you, do you guys, do you feel like y'all up front or a pretty, you know, as you've watched these five games, are a pretty athletic group. I mean, you know, the way y'all can pull to get outside. I mean, Donovan gets out there almost mm -hmm. like a, a fullback, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. On a lead play. I mean, it, just mm -hmm. tell me, just describe this front, you know, from five games in about 
just uh, what y'all have shown people, I guess. Yeah, I would say that um, we do pride ourselves on trying to be the most athletic offensive linemen that are offensive linemen, but we try to do non-offensive linemen things, try to impress each other yeah. all the time. <laughs> you like know what, what I mean? I mean I, I, outside yeah. of the field. Yeah. like um, So I would say like that's um, something that we enjoy, you know, trying to get on the outside, trying to pull different guys, just uh, and then try to compare the numbers. The next day in the locker room, you see the speeds, like who was really sliding, you know, the Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. And what, what's something y'all, I mean, give, give me an example of something y'all do where you show off your athletic ability, you said, off the field. Um, yeah, so, for example, we have, like, force plate technology where we, like, test our, um, I guess, our, like, wattage from our jumps off the plate. And um, me and Donnie compete weekly when we do those jumps. So yeah. to see, you know, who can. And we're not sure if, it, if it's trying to, to get the height or if it's trying to get the force off the plate. I don't know, but it, it doesn't matter because me and Donnie are just looking who gets the higher number in the end. So stuff like that's fun, and I think that would keep the – you know, the little competitiveness, because we're all, all five of us are competitive, except for Luke, when it comes to jumping, he can care less. <laughs> yeah. And that, what he's just talking about, that force plates technology, is what we're talking about, the intersection of sports science and research. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to do a story on sports science and research, that's the release that I... You could have just told me, you didn't have to tell everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, how many watts for you? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I just know I try to get it higher than Donnie's, and I'm, I'm happy. What? <laughs> if, uh, if somebody were to say that um, comparing you as being, you and DeJuan, really, uh, as being the best tackle combo since Orlando Pace and Corey Stringer, what would you say if you heard something like that? Um, I would say that's like really cool for somebody to say because I feel that's a very high comparison. And I feel like, you know, you know, it's, we're, me and Dewan are only five games in, you know, and they put together, you know, I'm not sure how many great games together. So we still have a lot that, you know, we have to continue to do and continue to show, you know, to be able to, you know, really complete that comparison. But I think that's like really cool, you know, for so far. They only you know. had one season together. Oh, they did, really. That's cool. A couple more questions you from there. Coach Fry and Coach Solani and the things that they've, they've helped you get better and be ready to play tackle. Can you just specify a thing or two they've shown you that maybe you didn't have in your repertoire coming into this season? Um, I think just like one thing that like we've done is that, yeah, like we've worked, you know, like thousands of reps, you know, all the way since they got here till now. But I feel like the biggest thing that we spend a lot of time on is just the mental aspect of that, you know. Yeah, like when I first had to play tackle, you know, again for this season, I left tackle coming from guard. It was like new and fresh again, but, you know, I already have the skill set. I have the ability set. So now the mental transition of just like trusting that, you know, I already have it down, but I need to, you know, give myself time for my body and my mind to, to get back into it was a huge thing because, you know, a lot of times it's not like each rep on the field is not always about as much the physicality, about as much who wins the mental battle that play as well too, you know, so I feel like that's a big area. You know, I know you're close with Willie, with Willie Anderson. And having Orlando around here with, with his boys, you know, being recruited here, playing here, have you got to know him pretty well? I mean, do you compare notes from those guys? Or, you know, how, how does having Orlando Pace on one side and Willie Anderson on the other side kind of help prepare you for what's next? Yeah, like, I mean, I, like, I feel like, you know, that's really cool to be able to say those are two people that I, I, I could reach out to whenever, you know, to just talk about anything. And um, I just think it's, like, really cool after a game when I'm, I'm – like I'm able to talk to either one of them and they, you know, set out a great game and I, I showed great this, this and that. And I feel it's really cool because I feel like coming from somebody like them, like that means a lot, you know, versus, you know, like my little cousin that couldn't really see over everybody, you know, that still means a lot too. But obviously like I feel like it's 
You know what I mean? I don't know Rex. Who's harder on you? Is, is, is Willie harder on you than Coach Fry? I mean, who, who really, like, picks apart the game? Um, I, I would say they both do. Well, I, I, I would probably say the hardest person on me is my cousin, Mike Larkin, who played at Miami, Ohio. He's a wide receiver for, for Ben Roethlisberger. He's never played offensive line, but he becomes the biggest offensive line coach after the games, which is which is really funny. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you're talking that you'd be a better receiver than he would be an offensive line. My routes are really good, but my hands, I, I just cannot catch. I don't know what it gloves. is. Those gloves. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap him up. Go ahead, Steven. Mental transition. You were talking. Given that you were kind of born for that, you played it your entire life outside of last year. How difficult was that to kind of take, flip that switch back on this offseason? Um, I, I feel like you know, like I feel like it's kind of like. It was, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I want to start it off, but, but basically, like, the transition was really, like, mental, but the physical aspect is that the transition is happening at a full speed pace against, you know, JT, Zach, Jack, and Javante, you know what I mean? So it's not like, there was, like, a slowed down tempo of, you know, of course, like, an individual and stuff like that, but it becomes real in the team periods. So it was a really fast-paced transition where, you know, you really, feeling the reps, which I feel like really helped and accelerated as well. So I feel like it's really like mental while I'm dealing with the physical changes. So back in the spring, was it like not as easy to put that switch back on as you thought it would be at first? Because now you're obviously playing. Um, I feel like it was just a mindset that I like went into it with, um, with Coach Fry I came in and told me and like, I had to, you know, I said I already have like the or urgency to flip it like right away but for him like to remind me you know to to give myself some time you know what I mean because if you're continuing to be hard too hard on yourself you're not going to give yourself any room to actually grow so I guess just the him being on my ear to give me that patience that patience that patience because he knows me well enough that you know I'm able to get on myself I'm able to to look at myself and train's gonna say, you know, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this now. But for him to help me with that patience piece, which is also like the mental part of it, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I was expecting for something to happen now, 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 now. And you're not giving yourself that time to take a step back and be like, what's the next course of action? Like what are the you know what I mean? Yeah. Then you're not having a plan. You're just trying to look at the final product but it's so like I said before, I forgot I was talking to, like with the painting, like I'm already trying to paint the corner sun. I haven't started on the grass yet, a little bush, a little tree. Like, I got to do the little things. Real quick, could you just describe Luke Whipper's off-field personality for me and how that maybe ties in? With Luke Whipper, right his off-field personality is just Jersey, like just Jersey. He thinks he's part of the Sopranos or something. What's wrong with Jersey? Yeah. I'm from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Jersey. So, <laughs> that's all. Jersey. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs>